Asahi Ikusaba is reincarnated into a fantasy world after sacrificing himself to save a little girl from a traffic accident. As a massive otaku, this is like a dream come true, at least until he realizes how weak he is. What's more, it turns out that his older sister has followed him into this world and she is every bit as insanely powerful as he is weak. With no power to his name and an overly affectionate older sister looming over his shoulder, this isekai life isn't quite what Asai imagined. Even so, he's determined to make the most of it. In a fantasy world full of magical beings and powers, a small village is under attack by a trio of orcs. With the settlement burned down, they are celebrating the chaos when a young boy walks up to them. This is Ikusaba Asahi, an adventurer. He warns the orcs to only step his way if they wish to die. Angered at his arrogance, they do just that. True to Asahi's word though, they find themselves being picked off one by one. A woman appears from the sky, using earth magic to impale one of them and an explosion to beat another, she stands in front of Asahi. And flashback time. Asahi's human life was ended when he saved a little girl from a traffic accident by sacrificing himself. Next thing he knew, he was sent to another world, the only regret in his mind being that he's leaving his big sister. As a massive otaku, Asahi adapts to the new world pretty fast. He sells his phone at a pawn shop for some money and buys a bunch of equipment. Next, he registers at the Adventurer's Guild thanks to Tanya, the receptionist, and heads out to grind. Unfortunately, the second he leaves the town he's in, Asahi is attacked by a massive wyvern. Running from the wyvern and its flame breath, Asahi desperately checks a status window for anything that can help. Surely he must have a special skill of some sort, right? Turns out he does, but it's just stone throwing. With no options left, Asahi falls to the ground as the wyvern closes in on him. Facing death again so soon, all he can do is to call out for his big sis, Maya. Surprisingly, this actually works. A massive magic circle appears below him, and Maya herself is summoned from the sky. Coming down and seeing her brother in danger, she tanks the wyvern's attacks without a scratch and blows it into a cliff with a single hit. Amazed at what he's seen, Asahi reunites with his sister and gets some answers. Back in the real world, Asahi is actually still alive, but his body is in a coma. When she started hearing Asahi muttering about another world, she figured he must have been isekai and beat herself into a coma so she could join him. Now the two can return home together. Except there's a small issue, they have no clue how. Back to the present, Maya finishes off the third orc and instantly glomps onto her little brother, fussing over a scrape on his cheek. To Asahi's anxious terror, the villagers think he beat the orcs himself and give him the credit for it. Back at the guild in town, Asahi learns this has shot him to an ogre rank adventurer, the fourth highest class there is. What's more, faking one's strength to get a high rank is punishable by death. Things really aren't looking great for Asahi. He's not even the one trying to fake anything. Maya just keeps giving him the credit for her deeds and she's just too much of a brocon to stop. With this new revelation in mind, Asahi has no choice but to beg Maya to continue as she's been doing. She has to make him seem as strong as his rank implies or he'll be in massive trouble. Of course, she agrees instantly. Next, Asahi asks to see her status window. Weirdly enough, her stat circle is blank, though the screen is yellowed out. Oh, turns out Maya is so stupidly strong that her stats are beyond the status window itself. Damn. Later, a knight named Siegfried and his party are leaving town with a massive gathering to bid them farewell. Here, Asahi learns they're off to fight the Demon King. As Asahi explains how that's the final boss in most fantasy games and probably what'll send them home, a commotion is made in a nearby snack shack. Delev, a former ogre class adventurer, is trashing the place in his jealousy of Zeke. Asahi doesn't plan on involving himself since it'll likely just make things harder for him. Unfortunately, he is forced to step in when the townspeople around him realize he's an ogre class too and can stop Delev. With no other option if he doesn't want to be exposed, and Maya already angry at Delev and insulting her brother, the siblings leap into action. With a bunch of cocky words to bait him, Asahi makes Delev come near him. Just as he does, Maya uses her magic to create a massive gash in the road between them. With this trick, they scare Delev into fleeing and keep Asahi's reputation intact at the same time. Though he may not be the overpowered one in this new world, Asahi is in for one wild ride alongside his sister. After spending a decent chunk of time hunting slimes to level up, Asahi is finally able to kill one. 
On the other hand, Maya takes out hundreds with a single wave of fire magic. One day, early in the morning, Asahi sets out on a solo quest so he can help contribute to their living expenses and do something on his own for once. The quest he chooses is to pick rainbow mushrooms in Claudio Forest. While it's meant to be a beginner level quest, Asahi's terrible luck rears its head yet again. A bear attacks him out of nowhere, forcing him to flee. As he's running, Asahi bumps into a woman he initially mistakes for Maya. Despite seeming happy to be called Big Sis, she's not actually Asahi's sister. This strange horned woman is someone else entirely, though her strength certainly seems to rival Maya's. With a single hit, she takes out not only that one bear, but the dozen more that appear after it as well. As if that wasn't amazing enough, her next victim is Kazer Bear, the guardian of Claudio Forest. Though he's here to avenge his underlings, the woman blocks his entire attack with a single magic shield. After that, she uses her own fire magic to completely obliterate Kazer, leaving no trace of the fearsome beast. She turns to Asahi, who has been watching everything in shocked awe. With the danger gone, she introduces herself as Kilmaria, one of the six generals of the Demon King's army. As it turns out, she is here to seek out the rumored prodigy adventurer, Ikusaba Asahi. After becoming as strong as she is, she craves a fight with someone strong enough to match her. Proving once again just how terrible his luck is, Asahi's adventurer ID coin falls out of his pack and rolls to Kilamaria's feet. Now, knowing that he's her target, she gives chase, determined to have a proper battle with Asahi. As the boy flees the demon, he's eventually stopped when he bumps into a woman. And this time, it is indeed Maya. Having sensed her brother was in danger, she came running to save him. After hearing what the situation is and completely misunderstanding it as something indecent, she faces Kilmaria in a battle. As the two overpowered women exchange blows, Kilmaria is shocked to see neither of them have been defeated in one hit. Because of this, she quickly realizes the rumors of Asahi's power are because of Maya's acts. Overjoyed at finding someone she can fight properly, the demon engages Maya in an epic magic battle that takes them through the sky and forest. Eventually, Kilmaria launches a massive fire attack, ready to end things. Maya, however, simply brushes it off and fires back a hurricane with just a swing of her arms. In that single move, Kilmaria is beaten and the day is won. With the demon on the ground, Maya goes to deliver the killing blow, only to be stopped by Asahi. Even though she's a demon, he's certain she's not a bad person. After all, she saved him multiple times. When Kilmaria tells him not to show pity, he simply says to be quiet and listen to her brother for once. Though he's mainly talking to Maya, and this sparks something within Kilmaria as well. As the siblings walk away, Asahi complimenting Maya on her strength, she looks at them with a smile on her face. A new day, a new attempt at hunting solo for Asahi. As a goblin chases him through the woods, he lures it into the open and throws a stone at him. Unfortunately, this barely does any damage to the thing, let alone beat it. Even worse, the goblin summons its allies and attacks Asahi. As he's on the verge of being hit by them, Asahi's usual savior shows herself. Out of nowhere, Maya appears and burns the goblins to a crisp. After saving Asahi, Maya has one of her regular episodes of fawning over Asahi and driving him up the wall with discomfort. All Asahi can think is, he really needs to work on getting strong enough to go solo. Just how long can he keep living like this? Later, after returning to the city of Epiphonia, Asahi checks his stat window and gets excited. He's finally hit level 10. While it's hardly much of a milestone, it is one for him nonetheless, and he's happy with it. It just signals him being one step closer to being strong in his own right. This does confirm one thing though. The XP he gains is directly proportional to how much damage he does to monsters. Always willing to help her brother, Maya comes up with several ways for him to cheat his way through grinding a ton of XP. Unfortunately, all the methods feel too cheap to Asahi. Plus, how he's supposed to enjoy the game if he bends its rules in such a way. After feeling a cuteness overload from something he says, Maya gloms onto him once again. But this time, he is ready. Thanks to a new skill he's learned, Escape, he's able to teleport right out of her grasp to a little distance away. Rather than saving him though, this just dooms Asahi. That action just then set Maya's blood boiling and now she's determined to get to him. As she leaps to glomp him again, Asahi finds himself defenseless. With just one use of Escape, his MP has been fully drained. Later, Asahi's at Adventurer's Guild to look into joining a party one of the staples of a fantasy world or game. The sort of thing Asahi idealizes for providing all sorts of worldly experiences. Tanya notices him and joins Asahi at the notice board. 
Though he hasn't been able to find a good party to join yet, she encourages him with stories of Balmung, the party of the great Siegfried. After leaving the guild, Asahi comes across a scene he can't ignore. A trio of thugs are bullying a drunk on the side of the road. Stepping in, Asahi throws a stone at each of them and yells out to the drunk to escape while they are distracted. As the thugs turn on Asahi though, the drunk displays incredible skill and takes them down just in a second. As it turns out, this guy is Siegfried. After setting out to fight the demon lord, Balmung was taken down by just a single demon before they could even get close. After that, the party was disbanded. Seeing Asahi's insistence on the importance of a party, he breaks the cold truth to the boy. He tells him of just how flawed his party members are and how it's never been quite the experience he imagined. Asahi can't just abandon his views though and leaves after inspiring Siegfried to be better. Back at the guild, Asahi ends up being roped into an emergency quest by Tanya. A village nearby is attacked by three wyverns and he has to stop them. Next thing he knows, he's been dropped at the village with no backup. Standing in front of the wyverns, Asahi is scared for his life. Luckily, the savior appears just in time to rescue him. This time, it's the demon general Kilmaria. As the two speak and she teases Asahi about calling her sister, another three wyverns appear behind them. Kilmaria is just about to put them down when a familiar fire spell deals with them instead. Maya's tracked her brother down to save him from the wyverns. Seeing her, Kilmaria is overjoyed. This is the true reason she returned here, to have a rematch with Maya. Unfortunately for her, Maya couldn't be any less interested. After some back and forth, Maya admits to not caring about anything but protecting Asahi. Kilmaria tries to use this to lure her in, but that just backfires on her. As the two women fight amongst themselves like kids, Asahi silently gets kidnapped by yet another wyvern. Pausing their fight, both women move to save the younger boy. Floating up in the air, Maya fires a destructive thunder spell, and Kilmaria catches Asahi in the air. Back on the ground, the two women forge a strange bond over their shared care for Asahi. When Maya and Asahi turn to leave though, Kilmaria grabs him once again. Regardless of anything else, she still wants her fight. Deciding he's had enough though, Asahi finally uses his escape skill to get back to Maya. Impressed, Kilmaria admits that there's much more to him than meets the eye after all. With her mood brightened, the demon tells the siblings she's satisfied for now. But she'll be back, and they can count on that. As Kilmaria leaves, Maya gets right back to her antiques and terrorizing Asahi. Just another day in the life of Asahi and his one-hit kill sister. And with that, our recap comes to an end. What other adventures are awaiting our protagonists, and will they ever wake up from the coma? Let us know what you think in the comments, and we'll find out in the next episodes. Thanks for watching, drop us a like, share it with your otaku friends, and subscribe to Anime Soreo to find more awesome animes like this to watch on your feed.